So it's come to my attention that I'm like complaining way too much, like with my content that I'm creating on my channel. And um, I think that's fair. And the reason I think it's fair is because I don't want to ever become one way too much, right? So my last positivity post, remember uh, on my channel, I, I, every now and then I like to remember to try to keep myself grounded, even though I forget sometimes, to uh, come out with videos that are mainly geared towards positivity. The last video I did doing that was on the 5th. So it's been about six days since I lasted a positivity post. And I, you know, I want to go over um, some of the, I guess positive, yeah, I guess positive things about Raid still. Um, so yeah, I've, you know, I've done champion guides since then. Um, live Arena has actually been uh, pretty cool. I've been doing more Live Arena lately, mainly for the Marius missions, but I feel, I feel like the more I do Live Arena and the more familiar I get with it, the more comfortable I get with it and comfortable with fighting some of the champions that I'm not too familiar with, I feel like I'm enjoying it a lot more, right? I think at first, because I just didn't know how to do Live Arena, it was kind of an issue for me. So understandably, the, there was frustration there. But yeah, you know, it, it's fair for people to call me out on this. And I respect and want people to tell me when I'm being irrational or or being too much of one way, right? Uh, somebody said, like, it's not the end of the world. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. It's It really isn't the end of the world. I'm not really losing sleep over this. My content, uh, it's it's honestly easy. It's easy for me to complain. I'm not going to lie. I'm human. I'm, I'm imperfect. It's easy for me to complain, especially when the entire community is complaining and I have people DMing me saying that they're leaving and they're going to give their give away uh, give their account away or people in my clan saying that they're they're burned out and they don't want to leave or i have like 90 percent of you guys in my comments telling me that you're going to leave and and stop playing and like if the conversation is that then i want to naturally read the room and then go with the conversation and you know bring it up and there's other reasons to talk about it too like oh you know the more you talk about it the more um you know uh, Polarium will hear about it, yada, yada, that whole speech. And then, you know, squeaky oil gets the wheel and whatnot. That's cool. Um, then the other part was like, oh, uh, like we can focus on some of the positive things, right? And I'm like, yeah, you know what? There's, there's still positive things. Someone said it's not just Hydra, right? Raid is not just Hydra. That's fair. That's valid. I respect it. What are some other things that people can enjoy in Raid? If you're not an end gamer or frustrated with all the you know stuff players been throwing at us right um well i mean i just i just shed us uh, shed it i just said it and i kind of show it like i've been doing a lot more live arena videos lately you guys also enjoy the live arena videos <laughs> one thing that newer players can can enjoy is just progressing through the missions right getting through the missions these milestones um and i think that's where a lot of us started out with finding out what's difficult and then overcoming that but we have a post here that I wanted to go over because I, I figured, you know, it's hard for me to really come up with anything good because as I've said before, I'm jaded to the point where I'm in the end game and everything's already done. So like I could say, yeah, theory crafting Hydra, even though that's kind of eh, and theory crafting teams for Doom Tower or the dungeons is another thing that I used to enjoy. But once it's already done and it's already set, it's not like I'm trying out new ways, even though I could, but I've I've done so many different ways to do all of the dungeons where it's kind of like, all right, well, you know, I've, I've had my fun with that. I've talked about it, all the positive posts about doing certain how-to dungeons and, and champion guides and everything has kind of already run its course. So, but I mean, there's that, right? If you're a newer player, if you're up and coming, then those are some things that you can still enjoy and you can get a lot of achievement. Like I think Raid thrives off of um, that aspect in game, right? Being able to achieve something that's super fucking difficult like in dark souls right oh, it's not the same thing but still it's a cursed city kind of the same thing except when you're going up against amius although some people in my clan are saying that amius is easy once you actually have fought him a few times and and um like learn his mechanics siege is it's kind of its own thing also um what else what else is still fun in raid um shard pulls are pretty good right let's say you're you're looking to uh summon rotos like that would that would be pretty fun to uh pull a bunch of shards and try to get rotos i think this is one of the the main things uh that a lot of people still probably enjoy um, 
you know, be that as it may, disregarding everything. Let's see if we get a Rotos. Can we get a Rotos? Let's see. Although I've had some people in my comments get a little bit dejected that the um, they pull like X amount of shards and don't get the champion that they want, which is understandable, but that's also kind of part of it. Um, let me see what other people in this post are saying. What's your best memory? This is a good guideline. What is my best memory in, uh, in Raid? I think personally, the one moment I had where like I literally jumped up and down and my wife was like, oh my God, what what the heck? I mean, she didn't say, oh my God, what the heck? But her face, like her eyes just widened up uh, was when I got Lydia. When I finally finished Faction Wars, I was so excited and I jumped up and down and she freaked out. She's like, whoa, what's going on? All right, what's going on here? What, what, no, really, what is going on here? Because do I not have space? All right, don't do as I do. This is not something you, you're going to want to do. Do not feed rare champions. I think we have enough here. So let's go ahead and pull some more shards right we're trying to be positive here this guy says mine is simple when i pro uh, pulled ursula the mourner she was a game changer for me having aoe re uh, aoe revive was a game changer always dying easily then when i pulled sky touch Sh uh, shaman she and ursula have good synergy i did not know that they had good synergy uh when i got sill that became a clinched that oh that clinched the deal my style of play has shifted from safe mode. One nuker, many healers, and revivers needing one Ursula. Have her in most of my teams, yeah. This guy says, when my brother started playing in 2021, I saw Kaimar on his screen. I lost my mind. I was like, oh my god, is he that good? Nope, nothing yet. No, nope, nothing there yet. Um, somebody said, I'm doing this for clout. Like, I'm complaining for clout. Uh, I would say probably not right um subscribers don't really matter for a youtube channel after you get monetized subscribers don't matter views matter if you want like it, it kind of just depends on what you want right i have multiple channels i don't care too much about this channel i care about this channel in the sense that it was my first channel and that i was able to learn how to do youtube on this first but this isn't the channel that i that i um really want to uh get going i i think uh you know, I've talked about that a few times. Like, it's nice, and I, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for having over 3,000 subs. That's a pretty big achievement. And then the other half was, oh, uh, you're just doing this for money. You're hate farming for for money. And I don't think that this is enough money for me to like really continue doing this, right? Because honestly, like, how how much can somebody really complain about something just for money? You know what I mean? Like, I think you have to enjoy what you're doing and be passionate about what you're doing in order to continue to do something. And I genuinely just enjoy making the content the way that I'm making that I'm making content, right? I'm passionate about the way that I do things and I'm free to just say and do whatever I want and edit and act however I want. You know, this is a, a nice amount of side money, but it's not my main source of income. My most recent crap talking video got like 10 bucks. You know what I mean? That's not even worth an hour of my my time really i'm doing this because i just enjoy talking to you guys you know there's that it's not for the money it's just because i i enjoy it and i'm not trying to like be a dick about anything but i'm just addressing it to explain that that might be the case for some cc's but it's not the case for me um like i've said this channel is is a fun channel for me i can be very lackadaisical lax is that a word lackadaisical with it but it's not my main uh focus Right. I have my psychology channel right now, which is like the main thing that I'm working on that one I care about. But even on that channel, subscribers won't matter too much in the sense that. Um, like there's a certain point where subscribers do help because obviously you get more eyes on your videos, but it's more about the views at us at a certain point. And then, you know, getting money is based off of you. We've taught I've done a video on this showcasing everything on there but yeah that's just that's what i have to say about that all right where is any legendary can we get a legendary fusing tormin and having fun using him in arena and spider with an aoe hp burner beside him really long time ago uh spider was still somewhat difficult yeah you know i do remember doing that i remember using an hp burner and tormin to freeze the spiders yeah that's a fun thing coming up with uh interesting ways in the dungeons which I kind of brought up in the beginning, but 
like like i said once you have certain teams already set up then you're kind of just like oh okay you don't really think about it you just set it and forget it this guy says i quit when afk arena first came out i was half-heartedly doing a fusion then he pulled cardiel and tuana rock from 20 voids during the 2x was immediately back in 100 percent and haven't looked back yeah sometimes you pull like game changing champions and you're just like oh yeah let's go because that unlocks so many different areas of the game for you when my entire clan pushed from downing nm every day to downing unm every day the clan that i joined on my main account when i first got with them that was the case they were only doing nightmare and we were struggling to do we were struggling to do um what do you call it unm at all now we're able to just do it every day like all the clan bosses are getting downed every day but like the times are different also like there's different ways to improve your champions and make them a lot stronger not like there was before because a while ago or a long while ago there wasn't enchantments there wasn't ascension there were there wasn't uh boosts for um doing live arena so that that is a, a thing to to consider any of us who could do it already have bettered ourselves by leaving and joining a clan that already downed uh, UNM, but we stuck together, made the push better. That was really special. Likely one of my best memories. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. That's a good memory to have. Oh, I'd say uh, Plat. When I placed Plat for the first time, that was a pretty good one. Because I remember it was during the Cupidus Venus meta. That was the first time I placed Plat. And um, I was like sweaty. I was My heart was racing. Uh, my heart really doesn't race anymore placing plat so i stopped doing plat arena a while ago just because i'm just not really in, into it anymore and i got the avatar which is like the main thing that i'm doing anything for nowadays like if i if i see a challenge or anything like that if there's an avatar involved for the most part i'm gonna do it but yeah, i got my plat avatar and i was just like yeah you know i'm, I'm good it was the 25th of december the morning of when i got one void from clan boss while the 2x was going off, I opened it and got Krisk. Wow, he got Krisk. A year ago after building Islin for Hydra, had a mission doing arena with a single fraction, a faction. So I threw him into the arena with Arbiter and some other high elves when I saw that he does... Oh, he just doesn't die. Oh yeah. Who was it? Was it Tairaku? I think Tairaku put out a video using Islin and he just wouldn't die. <laughs> Oh, and then he used him to slay Scarab King. Another good moment was pulling Riho and Nergigante Archer on the same day. That's a huge one. Those are two really big champions. I think Riho was key for me to do uh, Sand Devil. I have since then redone my, my Sand Devil team, but yeah. Yeah, pulling, pulling champions that are game changers, huge. But yeah, there's a there's a lot of positive things still left in raid. Oh, look at this, Mr. Burrito Slayer, crazy great videos. You're speaking for the community. But yeah, anticipation, the best part of RSL, right? Surely it's not just me as a free-to-play player. I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that finds more joy in holding shards than pulling them. The game has crossed the line between oxycodone or oxytocin, highs of pulling shards and highs of growing your shard count. At this stage, the anticipation of what I could get is better than the reality of what it's likely to yield, and that's RSL. This guy's got 182 blues, 116 voids, no primals, and 30 sacreds. And that is an interesting point of view. Um, the bit about anticipation is very similar to buying the lottery. Some consider shards as a currency for fusions and guaranteed events, and I like that too. Once adopting, or once I adopt that thinking, I no longer fuss about opening shards. Whatever I get is just extra from guaranteed uh, rewards. And that's pretty much my take. I save up for fusions, except, or I expect nothing but rubbish, and then all the surprises are good ones, right? Yeah, when you get a, a game-changing surpriser, that's cool. Or at least, it, it, like if you're if you're an end gamer or a Kraken and you just spent money and you just basically have uh, everything, uh, one, be thankful, right? The positive Positivity post here, be thankful for what you have. This is how I am in real life. I crave delayed gratification and will always put off the short-term rewards for waiting longer. My son is three and he is the same way, already showing immense self-control when we tried the marshmallow experiment with him. Oh, that's a pretty good one. 
they did an experiment to see um, uh, how many kids or like which kids would be more likely to succeed in life based on if they uh, and it's been a while since I looked at uh, since I've seen this one but if I remember correctly it was it was that was the purpose to see who would become more successful based on their discipline whether or not at their you know toddler age if they took the marshmallow and ate it after an adult told them not to take it which I thought was an interesting thing and uh I tried it with one of the kids at the clinic that I work at and now he he ate it so I was just like oh, okay unsurprisingly I prefer to hoard my shards as well this is 100% my point of view. Shards are a currency to finish events that provide guaranteed value. Any great champ I pull from them are just gravy. Once you change your mindset to this, then all of a sudden it's easy to save shards and avoid horrible progressive events. Definitely. Progressive events uh, are usually not like the best unless you have a lot of shards and you're chasing one specific champion like a Rodos. Let's see, I'm 100% in agreement with you, also because I can't afford to book legendaries, uh, the appeal isn't at, there at the moment. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of people um, run into that situation, it's very common, even with me, even um, as a as an end gamer, before when I was used to, when I, uh, sorry, let me back up, before when I bought everything, when I was pay to win, I didn't have to worry about um, pulling any legendaries because I could always just buy shards for them, or buy legendary books for them, but now that i don't buy everything uh even for me lego books are a lot harder to, to come to come by this guy says and then comes disappointment but if you never pull you'll never be disappointed big brain moves there if you only pull for fusions and guarantees you'll never be disappointed that's another thing too right a lot of these people are saying hey if you pull for for currency if you pull it as, as points for a fusion that's kind of guaranteed right or if you're pulling for a straight up guaranteed then there you go Except, uh, expect nothing or trash. Then it either meets or exceeds expectations. Yeah, you know, keep your expectations low. Then when you're surprised, it's even nicer than uh, before. Let's see. He says, nice amount of shards. I have 80 ancients, 40 voids, a primal, and 19 sacreds. Also free to play. Just recently started hoarding shards. Might even go so far as saving up voids to get a guaranteed Lego out of them. Oh, and of course, I'm only pu pulling six sacreds for the Summon Rush event. Yeah. You are where I was 12 months ago. Now, I am uh, almost finishing most fusions and Titan events while also participating in most guaranteed events in the odd BOGO. I'm new to the game. Do you mind telling me how... Okay, so yeah, he's going to go into that. Yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of positive things. Um, and, you know, for me, uh, I still kind of enjoy pulling... Um, uh, shards. I don't enjoy it so much as uh, just because I don't really see any champions that are going to be a game changer for me. It's kind of like I can pull a champion. Like for an example, let's say I I, uh, I pull Valkanen, right? Uh, which I just did, but he's not really going to do anything for me. Um, nothing more than I'm already ready doing. So that's where I have to, you know, you know that that's where you know you guys sometimes have to tell me like hey man it's just the game remember that it's just the game and you know there's still positives about it right i need that i need to be reminded sometimes because sometimes i forget sometimes i just get lost in my sauce right so that's why it's important to always come around to these kinds of videos where you're just trying to be positive because it's a good reminder that hey yeah this this really is just the game boom so with that in mind we can continue pulling even more shards and hopefully we get something, something good. All right, there we go. Nice to see you again, Viz. But yeah, you guys tell me, what are, what are some positives about Raid? Remember, try to be positive. Ignore all the bad stuff. I know there's a lot of things here that, that we're not liking, that we're not liking to see currently. But hey, it's all good. It's all Gucci. We're going to be fine. We're going to be okay. All right, we're going to get through this. Um, the same person who put me on game telling me to remember that there are still positives and that Hydra isn't everything also reminded me that, hey, you know, Christmas is coming around. Christmas is coming around. There's some some updates coming around. Um, you know, New Year is a new year, right? So that's something to look forward to. Uh, this guy says Doom Tower. He's enjoying Doom Tower. 
Uh, he enjoys CVC. CVC is a good one. CVC is a, a free to play haven, I would say. A haven for free to play. Sort of. If you do your car, if you play, if you play it right, right, then you can do CVC free to play, and there's a bunch of rewards there. It just kind of, you know, requires you to do uh, time sinks. Um, you can get rewards from there. But okay, so there's that. Uh, last time I had 30 shards, I saw a nut event, and I was like, "Let's do it." Got nut, worth it or newt. <laughs> this guy put up a hold. FOMO plays a part in making me hoard shards too. What if there's an amazing guaranteed champ around the corner? I could gamble and pull and wait for it. The result of the gamble pulls are so bad nowadays that I'd much rather wait and watch my hoard grow. Yeah. At this stage, it's a test of attribution. How much I rate myself control. And yeah, it seems to get easier to withhold every single time, right? And uh, you know, even if you're not pulling the, the champion that you're aiming for, you know, it's just the game, right? Let's be positive. It's kind of just like in real life, right? If something bad happens to you repeatedly over and over again in life, you can either leave the situation or remember all the good things that come with all the bad things that happen, right? Or that's not like the exact way. I think I'm trying to articulate what I'm trying to say, but I think you guys get what I'm trying to say, right? A lot of bad happens. Don't always have to focus on just the bad. If you're getting slapped across the face, be happy that you at least have a face. That's not exactly what I'm trying to say. Positive, Valkanen is new for me. Will I use him? Probably not. Last 10 pull, let's go. Be positive, guys. Come on. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my god <laughs> the fuck <laughs> the power of positivity bro you said it's a little late for apologies but never want me back and now you're calling me